saw some stuff that has come up recently and I think it's worth talking about kind of some stuff I've seen in the past, some stuff I've seen recently that kind of connect and it kind of led to a point that I wanted to make to everybody. I'll link all of these resources I'm going over down below, at least the ones that I can, some of them I can't because they, I think, come with certain platforms. Um, like I'm going to talk about Zishano and his methodology, and I think that technically comes with the Bug Bounty Hunter platform, so you can't link it. Um, but I've done the Bug Bounty Hunter platform for a while that Zishano puts on for training, for Bug Bounty. You go through, there's an application, and you basically pretend to bug hunt. So you find vulnerabilities, you submit reports, and real people triage the reports and give real feedback. So you can start training in an actual bug bounty-esque scenario and you can level up as you find vulnerabilities. And I think there's like 170 or 175 now on the platform. So um, it's definitely a resource I would look into if you're looking to practice more. Um, and that'll be one thing I'll link. But part of that is Zishano's methodology that he goes over. And Zishano is one of the guys that believes in going after a target for months and months and months and months and months, even years. Um, the same target, going through all the assets, really learning how applications work, how the engineers engineer their own product, uh, similarities between products and how that and how they all work, how they connect, all that kind of stuff. User levels, everything you can possibly learn about the product. And if you spend any time in the corporate world, what that kind of sounds like, it's not the same thing, but it's similar is it almost sounds like threat mapping. So threat mapping is, or threat modeling, same kind of thing. Most people call it threat modeling, but what it basically is, is going through your software, your application or whatever, and basically finding all the places that you would could even be vulnerable. It's not necessarily, necessarily saying you are, but where you could be. Like, okay, we're assigning users tokens here when they sign in. So like this process could be a point of attack where we're assigning users tokens. So like that would be present in a threat model of we should make sure this is done correctly and this is defended because this is a point of defense. And well, our database calls get data here. So this could be something that could be bad. This should be you know protected and, and checked in on as well. So threat modeling is just going through your application or your software, what it does and just realizing where you could have chinks in the armor. Not whether or not you do or whether or not there's a present vulnerability, but just where could one live possibly or where would you attack? Where could there be a threat? So Zishano's methodology as you go through it kind of sounds similar to that. And he talks about diving into programs for a super long time and getting used to that kind of thing. And, and I thought that's great. And I think I mentioned it in a few other videos and it's, and it's an awesome methodology. But now recently, there was an interview that Hacker One did with Rhino Raider, who is running the Critical Thinking podcast and is a huge hacker and VP and all that kind of stuff and, and is a super amazing guy. Um, and in that interview, they asked if he had tips. And again, I'll link the interview, I'll link his Twitter, all that stuff. If you don't follow him, go follow him. If you don't listen to the podcast that him and Techno Geek do, Go listen to the podcast because it's way better than anything here. Um, it, it's incredible, incredible content. So if you don't listen to their podcasts, go listen to all the podcasts. I think there's like four or five episodes so you can catch up, you know, in a couple days by listening to it just in your free time. But go do that. But anyway, so he gets interviewed and at one point in this interview that you're reading through in word form, they ask for tips for new hunters or just hunters in general. And when you read through these couple paragraphs of how he responds, it sounds eerily similar where he sounds like go, he says, go through the application and find everything that it does. And then think about what attacks go with that functionality. And if you think about it, that pretty much is saying the same thing that Zishan was saying, just in a little bit different way and doesn't talk so much about time constraints and all that kind of stuff. But it's basically saying like, first go through and figure out everything that the application is doing and then once you know all the user levels and what it's doing and what users can do to each other and do to data and all this kind of stuff then go through and think huh okay so this functionality right here 
what sort of vulnerabilities could or may be present here. And that's a good way to narrow down and not just shoot payloads and really start to hunt with a purpose. And especially as you do it on a platform and do it longer, in my last video, we talked about getting intuition and gaining kind of a sense of what may be vulnerable to what and what may not. And this all kind of stems together, which is why I'm making another video about it because I just think it's interesting that these guys are talking about it, that getting used to looking at application functionality and actually what it does, and then going from there and thinking about how you could break it and using that sort of an approach to bug bounties instead of just find all the endpoints, find all the params, throw payloads everywhere, like hope something sticks, look for, look for reflected crap, like look for this or that, like look for 500 errors. Like instead, it's a much more methodological approach if, you know what I'm saying, English is bad. But anyway, you get what I'm saying. So I just wanna make a video about that. Go, um, Again, if you're not part of Bug Bounty Hunter, it's it's very worthwhile to practice. Look at uh, Z Shano stuff and just any Z Shano. I think he did talks at like Nahamcon. Um, he has some videos on a YouTube channel. Go check it out. Um, he talks about a lot of this stuff and his methodology and staying motivated and staying on the same target for a long time and really learning how the application works and is built. Um, I'll also link all of Rhino Raider stuff. Go check out his interview. And just like as you, you know, listen to the Rhino Raider and Techno Geek podcast, the Critical Thinking podcast, think about, they go through some of the examples of the bug they found and you realize that they actually are using that methodology. Like they're looking at how something works and they're thinking, huh, like what if instead of working this way, I tried to make it work this way? They didn't just like, I mean, very rarely, but a lot of the times they didn't really just blast stuff out there and like, wow, something stuck. Like they really were like, huh, this uses this technology in a certain way. Like I know enough about this technology to know that if this were broken in this way, it could cause this kind of a thing. And that's how they find stuff. So it's interesting. I would encourage you to go look at the interview and go look at some of Z Shano stuff and go look at the podcast. And then again, we've talked about go looking at write-ups, but now when you're looking at write-ups and you're doing your hunting and your practice, start thinking about what type of things show up where like okay so there's different levels of users so now i doors and authorization bugs kind of come into play or there's a lot of web hooks flying around so maybe ssrf stuff might be interesting or um you know that kind of stuff like finding where certain things come into play as you practice and as you read write-ups um just something to think about so it's gonna keep it nice and short and just stop here but go check out some of the stuff in the description and as you practice, as you bug hunt, maybe think about doing a little bit of threat modeling, doing a little bit of application mapping, and really spreading everything out, putting everything in a notepad or whatever you need to do, um, and looking at it more from a attacking via functionality type of thing, and uh, see where we get to. That's all I got. Thanks, guys.